try to allow as much access as possible, but my view is it can't get in the way of her being able to campaign. What we tried here was, um, you know, you could do a thing where you preset press along the way and right. said, let's let them just, let's just have it be open. That's how we did in other parades and right. see what happens. And I think uh, I wasn't there, but I saw some press reports that described it as chaotic. Huh. And so uh, they uh, put the, uh, you know, so we put the rope up yeah. to keep the, so that the parade could continue and yeah. she could uh, be able to talk to voters. I've known a few reporters who like to be tied up, but that was Clinton Ooh, Campaign details, Communications please. Director Jennifer Palmieri on MSNBC's Morning Joe discussing the campaign's decision to rope in the reporters who were covering Hillary Clinton during this weekend's July 4th celebration in New Hampshire. We're joined now by Brent Butkowski, writer for The Hill and a former aide to Senator Lloyd Benson, a senator that I grew up with as a kid down in Texas. So full disclosure, Brent and I have a connection. Brent, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. All right, at the, uh, at the risk of sounding a little funny and obvious, but I do have to ask you, uh, the, the, all the treatment aside over the weekend, why is it Hillary Clinton having trouble with the liberal press, which adored her at one point. What is going on here? Well, actually, uh, the press isn't really liberal. The press doesn't adore her or liberals, uh, and she has some reason to be uh, less than thrilled with the press. But they're not liberal. That, that's a mythology. The press is sensationalist. The press is superficial, and the press is very often shallow, particularly the political press. The foreign correspondents are great, by the way, and the war correspondents are great. Uh, but I would not call, I will resist this, uh, the liberal media. I think that's a mythology of conservatives. Although there's been polling that finds that, what, 80, 90 percent of journalists vote for the Democrat in the presidential races. I mean, I think with Barack Obama, it was nearly 100 percent. Even Obama himself made a joke about it at the correspondents' dinner that uh, some of you covered me all of you voted for me. But in Hillary's case, do you think that some of the negative press that she's been getting, or at least that she hasn't been able to woo them, has a lot to do with her vote for the Iraq war? It seems that was, uh, you know, after that, the, the press becoming much more progressive uh, seems to have punished her. Well, I I'll answer that, but I did anticipate that there would be some criticism of Hillary Clinton. And I did come ready for that. And Brent Spinowski's new law of Republicans criticizing Hillary is I need a little reinforcements. <laughs> <laughs> so I will answer your question in, 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 in a positive spirit, making it a little more palatable to me. Ah. Uh. Now, I opposed the Iraq war, uh, and, and strongly from the beginning. And I knew about it before most people did. And I do think that there is, is some sense to that. But the press. From the point of, of Hillary, they want in the press a contest. They want excitement. And they are uh, bored and believe their readers and viewers and listeners are bored by a campaign uh, that is, is, is basically one front runner and nobody else that at this moment poses a real challenge. Uh, so I think what you're getting from the press is you're getting a, a, a desperate yearning to find controversy. And that's what the press does. You won't get. Uh, very much intelligent discussion of issues from the press. You'll get who's up, who's down, the latest scandal. And, and you know, I, I don't think that it's their liberal. Yeah, no, they may or may not have voted for Obama. I'm not going to deny that. I'll tell you this, though. I know many people in the so-called liberal media, they don't have much love for Barack Obama right now, I promise you. Yeah, well, listen, let me ask you another question then. You're talking about how she is the presumed front runner. She, not the presumed front runner. She's the presumed nominee. She is the obvious front runner. But Bernie Sanders is continuing to gain momentum in the polls. Could Senator Sanders represent a serious threat or, or, or present a big impact on this Democratic race for uh, the presidency? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, right now I have a column on The Observer about Hillary towers above her Republican <coughs> But I also have a piece on the Hills Contributor site about Bernie Sanders is alone fighting against the insurance industry that's about to try to rip off consumers with a 20% to 40% premium increase, which was recently reported by Robert Perry in the New York Times. Bernie is a man of principle and conviction and values. I support Hillary, but love Bernie. He is touching a chord among progressives uh, who don't believe, by the way, that the liberal media is progressive. Uh, they re don't really believe that Barack Obama is progressive in many ways. He, Obama just spent the last two months attacking liberals over the trade bill. So Bernie is definitely touching a chord. 
He has earned the position of being the number one contender as the opposition to Hillary Clinton. I think he will have a positive effect by challenging her, as he should and as she needs to be challenged, to take tougher and harder positions of conscience. And I think, Brent, too, that we're, we're seeing Bernie Sanders gaining momentum and also Donald Trump on the other side. And what I think they have in common is that they're both so plain spoken, that they are not scripted. In Donald's case, I don't think he's necessarily principled, but he certainly tells you what is on his mind at that very moment, as ill-considered as it may be. <laughs> uh, uh, my question, too, about uh, Senator Sanders, however, is do you think that there is a chance that he might consider running in the general as an independent candidate. He's an independent, registered independent, self-described de self democratic socialist, and that could do real damage to Hillary. Well, if, if it did, uh, if he did, it would, but I don't think he will. I think in the end, uh, assuming Sanders is not nominated and Hillary is, uh, I think Bernie will stand on that platform at the convention and urge his liberal supporters to, to rally around Hillary so we don't have five Supreme Court justices that are like Antonin Scalia, so we don't have more attacks uh, on voting rights, so we don't have more attacks on, on civil rights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think what Bernie will ultimately do, if you assume Hillary's nominated, is he will, without any question, support her enthusiastically and try to get his people to vote. Now, I've told the group... We're about to thing. stop you because we're up against a hard, hard break here. We want to thank you very much for joining us today. Coming up next on the Marlsburg Panel, we've got Larry Elder and David Goodfriend.